So this video is an update to a previous video where I showed you how to use Ableton Live for the production of Dolby Atmos. And uh, one of the issues that we ran into is that Ableton Live is only stereo and uh, Dolby Atmos essentially asks for a 7.1.2 bed track. And you obviously can't do that directly with an Ableton because once again, Ableton is only stereo. So we had a couple of hacks, a couple of workarounds that allowed us to sort of kind of do uh, bad tracks for Dolby Atmos, but none of those things were really perfect. Now, however, over the last couple of days, one of the developers of one of the solutions that we used uh, made a couple of additions that now make it possible to really do a full 7.1.2 bad track in Ableton Live. And this is what I'm going to show you today. Now the video today is probably going to be a little bit shorter, but I felt that the development is significant enough to justify its own video. So if you're in Ableton Live and you want to do Adobe Atmos, now you can actually do that in almost exactly the same way like you would do in Pro Tools or any other digital audio workstation. And that's actually really, really cool. So with that being said, let's get right into how to actually do that. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. And if any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. Invite link is in the description below. And since you already added, also please don't forget to press the like button, especially if you get any value out of my videos. It really helps out the channel and makes my videos more accessible to other people. Thank you. So let's get right into Ableton. Now, a couple, a couple of things I need to mention before I get started. Um, there are a couple of requirements that we have today. The first thing is that uh, what I'm going to show you today only works on a Mac. And that is unfortunate, but that is a consequence of the fact that Dolby Atmos or the Dolby Atmos production suit is only available for a Mac. So, well, everything that we're going to do within Ableton is actually independent of the operating system. Uh, if you want to work with Dolby Atmos, you unfortunately have to have a Mac. And the second thing that we need to be aware of is that if we are using one of the later or the newest Macs that runs with a Apple Silicon chip, we need to make sure that Ableton is uh, set to work or set to be uh, opened with Rosetta. And the reason for that is for some of the things that we are going to do or use today are requiring an Intel chip, so they can't really kind of work. They are not Apple Silicon native yet, so we need to work with the emulation. Now, fortunately, this actually works relatively well, so there aren't really any problems that you have from that. So, so just set Ableton to Rosetta, and once again, we need to be on a Mac. Now, the way I'm going to do this today is with a very simple drum loop, and uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially take the drum loop and convert it into 7.1.2 and then feed that into the Dolby Atmos renderer. So let's just have a brief listen to the drum loop. It is a drum loop that comes with the Leviathan pack from Black Octopus Sound, which is actually a really, really nice pack in case you don't have that yet, highly recommend it. So let's just have a brief listen on how that really sounds. And that's really everything that I'm going to kind of use today. Now, the first thing I need to do is I need to open up the Dolby Atmos renderer. And once again, uh, this is uh, because we're working with Ableton, so we can't really use an internal renderer, obviously. So it has to be the external renderer, which once again only exists for Mac. Uh, so um, let's open that up and let's connect Ableton to it. So let's open up the renderer and that is under Dolby, Dolby renderer. And here we have the Dolby renderer. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure is that the input and output settings are set correctly. So let's go into the preferences and let's just make sure that everything is set correctly. So the input is supposed to be the Dolby audio bridge. So that's the way we're going to connect Ableton with the Dolby renderer. And then the output device, let me just set that to my um, user interface here. For some reason it didn't, it didn't remember that and let's, let's accept that. And then uh, we need to prepare Ableton for communicating with the Dolby Atmos renderer. So the first thing is that we need to select the uh, output device and the output device is supposed to be the Dolby audio bridge. That is a 130 in, 130 out uh, kind of configuration. So let's just, uh, if you haven't done that yet, you would need to go into the output settings and then essentially enable all the stereo outputs. And once again, the last two have to be mono outputs. That is because 129 is going to serve as the timecode um, channel. So that the channel that essentially provides the timecode information. 
Um, and uh, then uh, we need to do a couple of other things. Uh, and uh, if you want to know exactly how all the details, I invite you to watch my previous video here. I'm just going to go quickly over those things just to make sure that everything is said correctly. So the first thing that we need is we need a time code. So, so the time code needs to be provided by Ableton so that the Adobe Atmos renderer knows uh, what time code it's supposed to be using. And for that purpose, we need to select the time code plugin. And that is under Dolby. And here we have the LTC generator and we're going to put that on one of the audio tracks. It doesn't really make any difference which one. And uh, we need to set the frame rate. Now the frame rate has to be the same frame rate that is used in the Dolby Atmos renderer. In my particular case here, this is 24 frames per second. Doesn't make any difference. We're not going to work with video anyway, so it doesn't really make any difference whatsoever. But we need to set it uh, to, match, to match the frame rate of the renderer. And then we need to just make sure that this is also sent to the renderer. The renderer now is uh, essentially um, or expecting the time code on channel 129. So we need to kind of uh, set the audio out to external out and then essentially set that to 129. And that will essentially move the time code into the Dolby Atmos renderer. So the last thing we need to do is we need to simply send the, uh, the drum loop that we have to the, to the Dolby Atmos renderer. So for the moment being, let, let me just send that to the first two channels of the bad track. So I'm going to select the external out and I'm going to simply send that to one and two. And that should then pop up here under channels one and two of the Dolby Atmos renderer. Let me, let me just see if everything is working correctly. So let's just play that. And indeed it does. So we now have the audio signal. And uh, once again, I'm not going to talk too much about how to set everything up. If you have objects, you would need to have to add the um, Dolby Atmos panner and then essentially send the panning information to the Dolby Atmos renderer and the audio information separately. All I'm going to do here is I'm really only going to um, essentially send stuff into the uh, bad channels and uh, for that purpose we just send it into the corresponding uh, external outputs. So um, how going to, how are we going to convert that stereo signal now into a 7.1.2? And the answer to that is actually relatively simple. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to convert it into ambisonics first, and then we're going to kind of take that ambisonics signal and convert it into 7.1.2. The reason we're going to do it that way is because for Ableton, there's a very, very well produced um, a Max for Life set of devices that allow us to work with ambisonics, and we can actually utilize that. Now, I did a couple of videos before and uh, about, about that particular approach, and I'm going to leave some links in the description below. The, the system is called Envelope for Life. So um, there are really two things that we need to do. Is The first thing is we need to set a, an ambisonic source panner on our drum loop bus. So it's essentially kind of the, the, the track that holds the drum loop. And then we need a master bus device that converts that ambisonic signal back into something that we can send or forward to the ambisonic to the Dolby Atmos renderer. So let's just first uh, take the, the drum loop track and let's just add a um, device, a source panner. So once again, let's go into the, where do I have that? Under user library, I think packs, wherever you kind of put that envelope for life. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply take the source panner, uh, the envelope for life source panner, and we're going to drop that onto our loop, our, our track that essentially holds the loop. And uh, that essentially will convert the stereo signal into an ambisonic signal and then send that ambisonic sin signal into Max for Life. So uh, there's obviously a second step that we need to take. We need to take that signal out of Max for Life and convert it back into something that we can forward to the Dolby Atmos renderer. Now for that purpose, what we're going to do is we're going to use the master bus device. And we're not going to use the master bus device that is coming with the envelope for life system directly. What we're going to do is we're going to use the um, custom device uh, that the developer created for head tracking and uh, he essentially added a capability to the code into 7.1.2 um, I'm once again going to leave links in the description below, it's actually fairly straightforward, you just download that and uh, essentially open it up, that's all you really need to do and uh, in my case I have that here under master bus device for head tracking and I'm going to drop that onto our audio on one of the audio buses um, it could also be a, a kind of a return track, but it's not allowed to be on the master bus itself. 
And uh, this is uh, the master bus device. And uh, the only thing that we now really need to do is uh, we need to set that master bus device to kind of take that ambisonics audio and convert it into 7.1.2 and then forward that into the Dolby Atmos renderer. Couple of things. First of all, let's disable the monitoring option. That monitoring button here means that uh, the um, stereo signal is also simultaneously forwarded to outputs one and two. We don't want that because we essentially are just kind of using everything for a regular kind of monitoring the, um, the, the, the ambisonic signal. So let's just disable that. And then we're going to select here uh, the 7.1.2. Now, if you're using the regular master bus device that comes with Envelope for Life, you're not going to see that 7.1.2. This is sort of the addition that the developer of this particular custom device did in order to make what I'm going to kind of show you now uh, possible. Now, there's also a, a 7.0 option and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Let's just for a moment select the 7.1.2 and then we need to make sure that everything is set to the or uh, sent to the Dolby Atmos renderer and for that we just need to kind of send them into the corresponding external out. So the, everything here is already set to external out. So, so the first two I'm going to send to one and two. The 3.3.4 three, three, is going to send to three and four. Um, then five and six is going to be sent to five and six and seven, eight. And then the last two, nine and 10. So those are essentially the seven channels, 7.1.2, those are 10 channels. And that will then move the signal into the external output one to 10, and that should reach the Dolby Atmos renderer. So let's just see if everything is working correctly. So let's just play the loop. We see the ambisonic signal here. And if we go into the Dolby Atmos renderer, we essentially see that all 10 channels are now active. So that signal has been converted into ambisonics and this custom master bus device has then converted that into 7.1.2 audio. Now the one thing that you're noticing is that it also sends stuff into the LFE channel and uh, what it's actually doing is that it's going to, let me just turn it off for a second, what it is actually going to do is it's going to send uh, the mono signal into, into the LFE channel because it assumes that there's some bus management going on. This might not be optimal for you. Um, so if you're working with Dolby Atmos, quite often you actually don't want to send anything into the LFE channel or you actually only want to use the LFE channel for its actual purpose, which is low frequency effects. Uh, if, if sort of the way this uh, works bothers you or if it's not really working for you, what you can do is you can instead switch to the 7.0.2 and that essentially makes sure that there's nothing sent into the LFE channel so that you can, for example, use a separate track and just send stuff into that channel separately. For example, you have certain low frequency effects and you just want to send those into that, that particular channel. You can you can then do that. Uh, so if you, if you am not doing that, I should, I should see no... Uh, action on the um, LFE channels. Let's just play that again. And then I'll see that the LFE channel is empty. And let's once again switch that back to the 7.1.2. If I do that, essentially I have, I have a signal on the LFE channel. So depending on your particular application environment or what you want to do with Dolby Atmos, uh, one or the other makes sense. Most likely you're going to work with 702 and then maybe send some additional signal into the LFE channel because once again, sending the, something into the channel just means sending it to the corresponding external output. That's really everything that you need to do. Now, if you're interested uh, in me showing you how to actually address that LFE channel separately with uh, LFE effects, um, let me know in the comment section and I can certainly do a video about it. It's very straightforward, but you know, kind of, I, I think it would make a nice video. So if you're interested in me showing you that, let me know. So if you now want to move things around, all we really need to do is we need to go into the source panel and um, essentially kind of move the signal there. So let's just do that. Now I kind of rearrange the windows a little so that we have both the renderer as well as Ableton open here at the same time. Uh, obviously kind of one thing that you would probably do is you would work with a two monitor setup, but you know, kind of for this particular purpose, that's perfectly fine. So let's just, uh, let's just play a little loop and we can then essentially move the signal. So let's just move that maybe to the to the left or to the right or we can also move it down up and depending essentially on how we moved it so now it's for example it's completely on top um, 
we will have the corresponding uh, channels active. So this is really everything I wanted to show you today. Now the nice thing about this particular solution is that with the exception of the Dolby Atmos render, obviously, uh, all the software that we use, the Envelope for Life system, as well as this custom device are completely free. So you can just download them. So when you have, uh, if you have the Dolby Atmos render, if you have the Dolby Atmos production suit, uh, and you are used to working with uh, Ableton Live, um, there's absolutely nothing that prevents you from producing uh, Dolby Atmos with Ableton for Life. Um, you can do almost everything that you could do with any other digital audio workstation that is Atmos capable. And that I think is actually fairly cool and fairly nice and fairly neat. Um, I'm personally a kind of a big fan of Ableton. That's uh, the door that I started with. So I'm really happy that I can now do everything in Dolby Atmos with Ableton as well. So once again, if you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below or join our Discord community and let's have a chat there. And if you, if there's anything that interests you that you want me to explain a little bit more in detail, let me know and I can certainly do a video about that. And with that being said, see you at the next video.